In today's note, we're going to be looking at two different types of circuits. So in the past, in our past note, we've looked at simple circuits, which just kind of gave us an overview of what circuits are, how they work in terms of open and closed, and a general overview of the path that the electrons or the electrical charge takes. So there are two types of circuits that we're going to be looking at, a series circuit and a parallel circuit. Starting with a series circuit, a series circuit is an electrical circuit in which the components are arranged one after another in a series. So we'll look at an example of what this means, but it, it's going to be quite clear that a series circuit is, or how, quite clear how a series circuit is different from a parallel circuit. So in a series circuit, it only has one path along which electrons can travel. So when looking at it, there's only one pathway that electrons can travel. There's no other pathway. If this pathway is interrupted, the whole circuit cannot function. So in the past, we had things, we, or if we think of a Christmas tree and the Christmas lights, if one light bulb went out, the, the rest of the lights would not work. So that meant that they were wired in series, meaning that the pathway was interrupted when one light bulb was burnt, so the electrons couldn't flow past that. So the entire string of Christmas lights was ruined if one light bulb went out, or you had to go through and find that one light bulb that didn't work. So in a series circuit, the amount of current is the same in all parts. So the current is the same throughout the entire circuit, which makes sense because there's only one path for the electrons to travel on. If you add loads or light bulbs, again, like a buzzer or a speaker, whatever it happens to be, the resistance increases. We'll talk about resistance later, but resistance is basically how difficult it is or something that restricts the flow of electricity. So by adding more loads, we're slowing down that current or we're hampering, or, uh, we're hampering that current because um, it's got to travel through more objects. And basically what this means is that when you add more and more light bulbs, they get dimmer as you add them. So if they're not going to shine as bright as if there would be one light bulb attached when you have multiple of them wired. So this is an example of a series circuit. So again, we can see we have our cell here. We have some resistors that are attached. So basically the electrons would flow out of the negative end. And there's only one path for them to travel on. So there's only one path. They're not going to deviate. They're always going to be flowing in this general path. So that is one path or a, an example of a series circuit. Again, you can, add, you can add stuff along this pathway. You could change this out for a lamp. You could change this out for like a voltmeter. But basically the idea is there is only one path that these electrons can travel on, and it's going to be in this box shape. Parallel circuits are the other type. Parallel circuits all parts are arranged so that the electrons can flow along more than one path. So that's the key difference. Parallel circuits, there is more than one path, and in series circuits, there is only one path. A junction point, a point where the paths combine. So we saw an example of this in a previous note. That's where we saw the wires connecting with the little circle on where the wires connect. Basically, with a parallel circuit, an interruption or break in the pathway does not affect the other pathways. So you could think of something like, example, your house being wired. If one light bulb goes out or one light goes out, it does not affect the electricity or the flow of electrons to other appliances in your house, which makes sense because it'd be a very, it'd be a large inconvenience if one light bulb went out and everything in your house went out, because then you'd have to go through and find the one light bulb that didn't work, and then replace it. Adding more loads to a parallel circuit does not affect the resistance. So by adding more loads, um, such as light bulbs, it does not cause them to glow dimmer. So the more you can add more light bulbs, and it's, it's not going to affect how they shine. So this is an example of a parallel circuit. So we can see we have our cell here, we have again three resistors. So basically the electrons again travel out of the negative end. And once they get to this junction point here, there's two pathways that the electrons will travel. One will travel continuing on and the other one will come down towards resistor three. And then once they pass this junction point, again, they come to another one and they have another pathway to travel. So whether they come down resist, re to resistor two or they continue along and go down to resistor one, 
but regardless of which pathway they travel, they all end up coming back to the same spot, which is this source, or in this case, this cell. So they're all going to be traveling up where they come down and then they continue along. They join back up and they go back to the cell. And again, it's still a continuous path. It's still a closed path, but it's giving you multiple pathways. So that means if something were to happen, say to this pathway here, if that was to get cut off, maybe we were to cut that and get rid of that, the electrons would still be able to flow through the other pathways. So even if they couldn't come down this pathway, they would still travel and continue down these other two pathways. And again, you can see where the idea of parallel circuit comes into play. Um, if you remember from math, parallel means lines that uh, run side by side, they never meet. So we can see how these different pathways form parallel lines. So just some homework, just uh, some, some more definitions to look at, just to kind of expand your understanding of electrical circuits. But again, the main idea from this is just the difference between series and parallel circuits. What makes them different? Um, 